All right, welcome back folks and welcome to our online students. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at something called electron affinities. Electron affinities. Now affinity is one of those five dollar words that you use to impress people when you're sitting around the Thanksgiving table. If, if, if I were to say I have an affinity for dark chocolate with almonds, ooh, what would that mean? Does it mean it gives me gas? What does that mean? I like it, yes, I like it. So affinity means that you like something. And so when we think about electron affinities, we're thinking about how much do atoms like electrons. Now this is anthropo, anthropophor, anthrop, anthropophorbation. I can't get this word. I cannot get these syllables out of my mouth. It, it's attaching human properties to non-living things, okay? So these are atoms they don't really like or dislike anything, but how much, how much are they attracted to electrons or how much energy is released when they pick up electrons? And, and so for our purposes, we're gonna say here that electron affinity, Electron, electron affinity, this is going to be the energy that is released. So energy released, energy released um, when, um, energy released when electrons are added. Energy released when electrons are added. Okay, energy released when electrons are added to an atom. And generally, generally um, uh, our, we have more energy released as we move to the right hand side of the periodic table. Now in a moment I'm going to show you a table that comes right out of your textbook. And do you need to memorize this? No, you don't need to memorize this if we understand the principle behind it. So I'm a big fan of let's, if we understand what's going on here, there's less to memorize. So here is the table directly from your textbook. And it's got a bunch of numbers on it. Most of them are negative, some are positive, and they range all over the place. So just take a moment just take a moment and, and look at the table and see if anything sticks out to you. See if anything just kind of catches your attention. Anybody, anything stand out to anybody? Yeah. Helium just doesn't care, right? It's like it just doesn't matter. Yeah, it's got a value of zero, huh? So it seems like no energy is released there if it gains or loses an electron there. That's a little weird, a little odd. Uh -huh. Any, anything else? Yeah. The Nobel gases are all positive, where, whereas the others are negative. That means you have to pay them to take an electron. You have to, you have to give them something. You have to add energy to get them to take an electron. You, you had your hand up there. Yeah, nitrogen falls in that category. Nitrogen is positive. You have to pay nitrogen to take an electron, right? It's like, here, here, take this chocolate. No, you gotta pay me. You gotta pay me to take that. That's weird. What's up with nitrogen? Nitrogen has a half-filled shell. Yeah, it's very stable, just the way it is. It's like, thank you very much. I don't need no chocolate, right? It's fine, okay? Nitrogen's a little weird like that. Okay, yeah, nice, nicely done. Now, general trends though, general trends, which one, which elements, which part of the periodic table would release the most energy? Now, it's a little tricky because we've got these negative numbers. So the bigger the negative number, the more energy is released. And so, okay, so people are kind of pointing over in this direction, yeah. And so it seems as though that our electron affinity, so I'm gonna say electron affinity, 
electron affinity tends to go towards the right and tends to go towards the top. Electron affinity. And we also know that generally speaking, the atoms over here, are they big or small? They're small, right? So I'm just going to say small radii. And then down here in this corner here, we have large. Large radii. So it seems as though the smaller the atom is, generally speaking, the smaller the atom is, the more that atom will, will grab onto electrons. It's almost as if, as if, if the electrons are getting closer to the nucleus, that the more they want to get pulled into the nucleus. It's like, like they're getting closer to the edge of that black hole. Okay? All right, so that's the general trend. Uh, I'm, I'm with these. Now, if we wanted to do like, say, a calculation. So for example, if we had a fluorine ion, okay, here's fluorine, and if you find fluorine on our periodic table, it's element number nine, it's between oxygen and neon. Fluorine tends to pick up one electron so that it, is, it has a Nobel gas configuration. It is isoelectronic with neon. But if we wanted to remove one electron, let's just say we wanted to remove one electron, turn a fluorine ion into a fluorine atom, neutral atom, and have one electron there. Okay, so we're going to remove that electron. So how much energy does that take? Okay, so we have a value, and we look up there, and we see that if, if fluorine were to add an electron, it's 328 kilojoules per mole. So I'm going to say negative 328 kilojoules per mole. And then I'm going to make a conversion here. I'm going to convert my kilojoules to joules. And so every kilojoule is how many joules? A thousand. One thousand joules. One thousand joules. And then... I want to figure out for just one electron. I, I don't want a whole mole of them. So a mole, a mole of electrons is how many electrons? It's that number that you're going to get tattooed on, on you over the weekend. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Don't do that. Okay, that'll be like really awkward. Somebody just shows up like for office hours and, hey, Professor Locken, look at this tip. No, no, I don't want to see that. Okay. All right. So now, if we did this correctly, our units cancel out. Kilojoules cancel out here, and then um, our moles cancel out here, right? And then, and then when we're done, oh, I'm going to put electrons here, okay? And then when we're done, we should have joules, joules per electron, joules per electron. And, and so the energy here that gets released when I did my calculation is 5.45 times 10 to the negative 19th joules per, yeah, joules. And that would be per electron, joules per electron. So that's just figuring out how much energy then um, would be, it would re be required to either remove that electron or to have it added. It's just the change in energy for just one electron.